There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. Strong! Boop, 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 fun! Boop, 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 fun for fun! <gasps> that shirt looks dumb on you. And mean. Let's look at the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Toski, Bearer of Secrets. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. We're going to talk about our legendary indestructible squirrel, Toski, bearer of secrets, and the three ways that I would build it in EDH. But first, if you would, go down there, hit that like button if you like the video by the end of it, or hit that dislike button if you don't. Let's jump into this commander. Toski Bearer of Secrets, one green, three other for a legendary squirrel. Got him. One, one, can't be countered, indestructible, attacks each turn if able, each combat if able, and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. We've got a couple of different options with this. I know it's a mono color commander deck that we're going to be building, but for the three ways that I would build Toski, the strong way I would go with a big token overrun. We already have a lot of attacking happening if Toski's on the battlefield as it is. So let's make Toski bigger power. Let's give Toski a bunch of other creatures on the battlefield because of that ability saying whenever a creature you controls deal com deals combat damage to a player draw a card the fun way that i would build it is voltron squirrel i really just like to imagine toski with a helmet and some boots and a giant sword running at our opponents and attacking them screaming in its little squirrel voice and of course the mean way we are going to go anti-blue that spell says this spell can't be countered and i love that let's fill our deck with stuff like that so for big token overrun, that is the strategy there in the name. We're going to create a bunch of tokens onto the battlefield, and then we're going to use overrun abilities to win against our opponents. Obviously, we start with a card like Scoot Swarm. Anything that's going to residually be creating you tokens once you've invested that initial mana in it is exactly what we want. Scoot Swarm, if it is not dealt with, will get out of hand very quickly. And I know you'll have three opponents, but a lot of people don't run the amount of targeted removal they need to be running, and so they will try and board wipe an entire board just to do this to get rid of this scoot swarm so this is definitely a card that you want to run but look the og right here right avenger of zendikar enters the battlefield you get a plant for each land you control and every time you drop a new land each plant you get you get has plus one plus one counter put on it that's ridiculous avenger of zendikar is exactly what we want to be going with with this strategy. Michaeloth kind of comes at it from two different angles. You've got Devour 2 first with whenever it enters the battlefield, sack any number of creatures. The creature enters the battlefield with twice that many plus one plus one counters on it. And at the beginning of your upkeep, based on how many plus one plus one counters you've got on Michaeloth, you're going to get a 1-1 one, one created passively. And that's exactly what we're going for, right? We want to fill up the board with as many tokens as we possibly can now since we do have a legendary squirrel as our commander we might as well run some squirrels deep forest hermit comes in for five mana sticks around for a few turns enters the battlefield you're creating four one one squirrels and it's giving squirrels you control plus one plus one i like this as just a five mana investment of getting four one ones onto the battlefield and even though that we know the hermit is going away parallel lives is a lot like doubling season a little bit more of a budget version of that if an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control it puts twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead pretty straightforward right that's exactly what we want to do and so now we're at how do we win we've created a bunch of tokens what do we do with those we give them overrun this is where the name of the strategy comes from this card right here creatures you control get plus three plus three and gain trample until end of turn we can also do that with kamal heart of croza at the beginning of combat on your turn creatures you control are going to get plus three plus three and gain trample a little bit more expensive but it happens every single turn Plus, Kamal is able to turn our lands into 1-1 indestructible so that they can then participate in the overrun attack that will hopefully defeat our opponents. And I also think that Eldrazi Monument is a really good run in this deck. You're going to be creating a bunch of 1-1s passively. The downside of Eldrazi Monument, at the beginning of your upkeep, sack a creature, and if you can't, sack the monument. We can get around that with a bunch of 1-1s and 0-1s being created. We can just sack a token that we really don't care about to keep Eldrazi Monument on the battlefield because it's going to be giving all of our tokens plus one plus one flying and indestructible that's the strong way that i would build this let's look at the fun way and put armor on our toski to make a voltron deck 
Umbras are some of my favorite cards to run in a Voltron deck. Tusky, it doesn't need the Umbras as much, but I would still run them so you can put them on other creatures or get around any effects that say things are losing indestructible. Tusky comes with indestructible built in. So that totem armor, if enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy this aura. We don't have to use that for Tusky. We can either put it on, a, on another creature or just have some insurance against any sort of trick that's going to make our creatures lose indestructible. Umbras are always really good for Voltron decks because they prevent your stuff from getting destroyed. It is pseudo indestructible as it is. Luckily with this Voltron commander, even though we can run Snake and Spider Umbra, we don't really need to put them on there. We can put them on other creatures to make our other creatures indestructible. Or like I said, it's just backup for what we're already doing. That's why I think Toski is a really good Voltron commander because it comes built in with indestructible, which is pretty huge. Blanchwood armor is getting plus one, plus one for each forest you control onto whatever creature it's atta attached to. This is exactly the kind of thing you want to be doing. You want to be growing your creature. Eldrazi conscription. I run this one because I just like the idea of a Toski bear of secrets being on our side of the field and suddenly it becomes a giant Eldrazi squirrel that's 10, 10, trample and annihilator too absolutely ridiculous but this is exactly what we want this actually gives it the other keyword that we really need in this deck which is trample toski already has indestructible like i said we can give it hexproof to keep it from getting exiled if we wanted to do that but trample and higher power is really where you want to try and stick your main strategy eldrazi conscription does both of those things Whisper Silk Cloak keeps it from being blocked. That's pretty excellent. Also Shroud, that does count for us. So make sure that you suit up Toski as much as you want before you attach Whisper Silk Cloak. Otherwise, you'll have to unequip it and re-equip it um, because Shroud does count for you as well. It is not hexproof if you're not familiar, but that ability to make it unblockable, huge in a Voltron deck. Carnage Tyrant. Now, we may be wanting to run some other options. In a Voltron deck, you don't want your only threat to be your commander because then your opponents are able to just focus your commander down and pretty much keep you out of the game. So some good alternatives to your main commander will be necessary in a good Voltron deck so that we can suit that thing up and make it this big attacker. We won't be winning through commander damage at that point, but damage in and of itself is fine. And Carnage Tyrant is exactly what we're looking for. Can't be countered to fit into that theme with Toski and then Trample and Hexproof. Absolutely killer. You put a number on that thing and it's a bigger, bigger threat and you're suddenly attacking for a lot. Throwing the Last Troll does a lot of the same stuff, has Hexproof built in, can't be countered, and can be regenerated. Excellent backup for your Voltron deck, other creatures for your stuff, your auras, your equipments, your power, your trample to go on top of. And then Hungering Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters, can't be blocked by more than one creature, so you're for forcing them to just block with one. And whenever it's dealt damage, put that many counters on it. And so if it's not receiving lethal damage, it'll just grow and grow and grow. So if you can put Indestructible on this, put Trample on this, you are in the money. That's the fun way that I would build Toski. Let's look at the mean way and go completely anti-blue. So you've got a person in your pod that is just absolutely a counterspell fiend. Every single time you do anything, you have to wait to see if it resolves and it may end up getting returned to your hand anyway. Have no fear, Toski is here. What we're going to do with this deck is really focus on anti-blue strategies, protection from blue and all sorts of other stuff you're going to see. Sort of body and mind, plus two, plus two, pro green, pro blue, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you get a token and they mill 10 cards. Everything up to mill 10 cards is perfect in this deck. I would run this card in this deck regardless because it's going to be creating tokens, which is already part of our strategy. It's going to give us protection from one of the best colors in EDH with green, and it's also going to give us pro blue so that we're even further protected against that damn counterspell player. How about Snake Pit? Whenever an opponent plays a blue or black spell, you get a 1-1 one, one snake creature token in play. Done. Everybody's playing black. Everybody's playing blue, probably. You got a 1-1 one, one green snake token every single time an opponent plays one of these spells. That's huge. It fits right into our theme of wanting to overrun. Eyes of the Wizent, whenever an opponent plays a blue spell during your turn, you may put a 4-4 four, four creature token into play. So if they are countering stuff, if they're bouncing stuff, suddenly we're getting a 4-4 four, four every single time they do that, and they maybe not are able to keep up. Veil of Summer, draw a card if an opponent's cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can't be countered, and you and permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and from black until end of turn. Cast something, they respond with a counter spell. Veil of Summer, oh, hello, sorry, sorry about it. Ain't gonna work. Fizzle their counter spell and you get your stuff through and you get to draw a card. Huge, huge amount of value on Veil of Summer. Mist Cutter Hydra, can't be countered. Haste, pro blue, enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Exactly what we wanna be doing in our anti-blue deck. 
because we chose to bring a mono green deck to the table and we have it coming for the blue decks four mana for shifting ceratops can't be countered pro blue and for a mana it can gain either reach trample or haste pretty excellent dinosaur there and then seed time i've said this in a couple of other videos but this is one of my favorite green spells to cast just because when somebody casts a blue spell seed time baby take an extra turn after this one if an opponent played a blue spell sorry friends it's seed time we get an extra turn that's excellent they counter our thing whoops in response I'm going to seed time and call it seed time. And now we are getting extra turns. Thank you for countering that thing. We'll get it back probably. Green's good at that. We have no worries. And we were able to play seed time. And of course, Witch Stalker. We were talking about in the Voltron section, other creatures that could be really heavily suited up. Witch Stalker is one of these kinds of things. Hexproof casts a blue, blue or black spell during your turn. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. We can put trample on this. We can put some kind of, you know, first strike, can't be blocked, whatever sort of body and mind in the Witch Stalker's mouth. I guess that's where Witch Stalker would carry a sword and send it home to attack. That's the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Toski, bearer of secrets. Let's close the book. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments how you're building Toski Bearer of Secrets. I think for a mono color commander, this one's got a lot of potential to be a really fun deck to play. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit that dislike button if you didn't. Other than that, I'm tapped out and we'll catch you later.